All right, Washington also putting the squeeze on banks with proposals to link bank fees to pay policies and fees to recoup bailout money. What are the ramifications? Here's what Tom Donahue, president and CEO of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, said just in the last hour here on Power Lunch. If we have massive tax increases, if we have significant taxes, regulatory increases, limits on capital availability, all because of things that are working their way through the Congress, you could have a double div digit uh, in, uh, recession or worse. So fees related to pay structures perceived as risky, fees related to a bank's liabilities. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? Duking it out in the power grid, Mark Walsh, she's co-host of the radio show Left Jab, and Dan Mitchell, senior fellow at Cato. Guys, you know how it works. Good to see you both. 20 seconds to make your case. Mark, let me start with you. FDIC says more fees if your pay structure we think is risky, and the White House saying maybe if you have bigger liabilities, you ought to pay a bigger tax. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Insanity is that we are expecting the world of banks to actually self-regulate. They won't. Re regulation is important, and taxes are the only single tactic that will make ch uh, behavior change. This is like a sin tax on alcohol and cigarettes. We've got to tax the sinful behavior of these banks in the past and make sure they don't do it again. Dan Mitchell, do you see it that way? I don't think investing in the American economy is a sin. I think we need to look at the fundamental problem, which is bad government policy. It was easy money from the Fed that set the stage for the bubble. It was the corrupt system of subsidies from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that then caused the whole thing to blow up. We need to figure out how to get government out of the market so we don't have a repeat of government-caused mistakes. Mark. What do you You're, think of that? I, I love it when people blame easy money as the reason that banks misbehave. You don't? Easy, it, no, easy money is not, that, that's a symptom, but the banks took the easy money and handed it out in risky structures that sold downstream. This is what banks did. Regulations were not enforced. Regulations are on the books to take care of this. We have to enforce regulations and tax misbehavior to make sure behavior is modified. That's how you do it. Dennis? Hey, Dan, no, this, this, the, the simple thing to do would have been to take the banks that made the bad decisions, because you're right, some of them did. They should have gone out of business. Unfortunately, we have this corrupt version of recycling in Washington. The politicians take money from taxpayers, give it to the banks, and then the politicians expect the banks to recycle it back to them in the form of either higher taxes or campaign contributions. I want to end that corrupt system of Washington back scratching. See, Mark, he, he's saying we'd never be here if we had just let all those banks fail. Uh, well, I, I say this lovingly. For once, I actually agree with the Cato Institute's stance. I think too big to fail is an oxymoron. America is based upon failure and success. So I believe the Obama administration, the Bush administration made mistakes there. Okay, Dan. Look, let, let, me, let me jump in for, for, for Dan, if I might. Do, do, you, do you have a problem with the idea that, that a company, just like an individual, who engages in risky behavior ought to pay more for insurance? As a philosophical question. Uh, I I think that's a very sensible idea. I do worry that bureaucrats and politicians aren't going to be uh, analytical and So you just don't like who they're paying the, the insurance to, insurance. right? Is that, is that really what it is? You don't like who makes the policy and who they're paying that insurance premium to? No, if we're going to have deposit insurance, and that seems like a given, even though I would prefer that the private market deal with this thing, but if we're going to have deposit insurance, then yes, of course, we should try to make it risk-based. Mm -hmm. And if we have neutral, objective analysts actually putting together the formula, then I'll think that's better than just one flat fee on all banks, whether they're safe or risky. And but I so do conceptually, worry. you like this over idea. And over conceptually, again, you like this just idea, work Dan. Very well. That's the idea. So he I likes like the, the idea. idea. He's exactly the idea. what they're saying. But uh, you know what, guys? Uh, I don't but, like the idea. So let me ask you okay. carefully. <laughs> Mark, why let me ask you a why? question. Listen. I'm shocked to hear that. Mark, what the Obama administration, what Washington is doing here, mm -hmm. is basically it wants to put heavier taxes on, on risk. And yet, one reason we have a lower capital gains tax rate is to encourage investment. And risk isn't risk, Mark. What got us back 60% from the market lows? We're not People talking about taxes here, Dennis. No, 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 We're talking about insurance premiums. They are not taxing risk. What they're attempting to do is to tax undue risk. And that's a very fair stance to take. However, if you, you look back, to the last 48 that. months have been filled with with undue risky behavior that got us here. Mm -hmm. The tax is about that, not about risk taking in general. And of you course, think we'll the FDIC risk knows how to do that? They, ha they didn't before. That's the problem. The FDIC didn't know risk when they saw it before. They're going to know because it now. Because it was flat rate. They were selling flat rate insurance. Now it's time to have market based they have, rating. They have ability to go in there and look at everything on their books. They gather all of that data. They know exactly what percentage of every single bank has outstanding loans to the commercial sector, to commercial real estate, to residential real estate. They know mm -hmm. all of that. 
Well, that's my point. You smoke cigarettes, you drink alcohol, you pay a sin tax for that. Why shouldn't you pay a higher <laughs> tax rate for acting in risky behavior in the banking world just the same way? Good discussion, but, guys. But let, let me jump in here because seconds, the real Dan. problem... It, is we had subsidized risk by yes. the government through Fannie and Freddie. Let's have a neutral system. Don't have the government subsidize risk. Don't have the government penalize risk. Get government out of the business. Oh, I'm shocked that Cato would say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dan, Mark, good to see you. See you later. See you later. <laughs>